everyone. Welcome to A Stitch in Time. Today is Tuesday. It is May 31st, 2022, and this is episode 220. It's a lot of 20s there. My name is Carol. My Ravelry name is Knits and Pearls, and I am coming to you from the Fraser Valley of British Columbia, Canada, which is just a little ways east of Vancouver. I hope you are all well and that you've had a good couple of weeks since we last spoke. Um, I feel like I should have a whole lot more to share with you than I do considering how much time has gone by since my last episode, but I've just been busy with other things and trying to fit in the crafting wherever I can. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. Um, thank you to everyone who has reached out in one way or another uh, in the last little while. I always so enjoy reading your comments and messages and I do my best to respond to all of them. Thank you also to everyone who has been taking part in the uh, year of the stash in the Ravelry group. Uh, did I mention it's May 31st which means it's the end of the month so uh, April's Personal Sock Yarn Club will be wrapping up today and June's will be beginning tomorrow. And if you're still working on May socks, don't worry, you still have a whole other month to finish those up. Um, so yeah, just a reminder, if you've finished April socks but haven't yet posted them in the FO thread, make sure you do that before you head to bed tonight, uh, provided you're watching this on May 31st. Um, and I will be announcing prize winners for uh, the April year of the, or sorry, April, Personal Sock Yarn Club and May Year of the Stash Chatter Thread on my next episode. Uh, don't ask me when that's going to happen. Um, just keep an eye out for it. And uh, if you haven't already, just hit subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and then you won't miss any episodes. I always forget to say that. <laughs> um, as I was setting up to record today, I noticed that I match my little butterfly here, and so I've scooched my chair over a little bit so that you can get a better look at it. Um, okay, let's start with uh, my first of three works in progress. That's right, I have no finished projects to share with you this week. Um, I have been working on my Winter Magical Scrappy Socks, uh, which I am knitting out of part of my Winter Magical Holiday Countdown collection from Fibre Nymph Dye Works, which I opened uh, last December. There was a colorway for every day up until the 24th. And so, uh, as you'll see in a little bit, I've been weaving with part of the minis and I am knitting these socks with uh, the leftovers. So I started with color number one and I've been working my way up and I put in um, color 23, or no, color 22, I should say, last night, which means I just have two more colorways to incorporate. Um, so I'll bring that up a little bit closer so you can see. It's been really fun to see these knit up um, as opposed to being woven with and um, in years past I've ended up putting in a, another fiber nymph dye works yarn for the heel but this year I incorporated I think this is day 11 something like that um, and then what I'm going to do is finish off the cuff with the remainder of color 24. So this took pretty well um, all of the leftovers of color one. This took, I think I had like a strand about this long after doing both heels of this colorway and then I'm basically going to use up what I have of colorway 24 so that I've got sort of three concentrations of one colorway. Uh, you know, in each part of the sock. Um, that will make them the length that I want them to be, and plus it just kind of balances things out. So I um, have that on there just so you could see it. Okay, let's bring that close so you get a good look. I did a um, German short row heel, which has become my go-to lately. Unfortunately, I still have to look at instructions um, 
partway through and when it comes to finishing it off, but um, I'm sure with time it will become something I memorize, at least I hope it will. And um, I do have the same amount done on sock number two. I just didn't bother putting it on a sock blocker. So um, undoubtedly I will have these to show you next episode as a finished project. Uh, just figured maybe I'll just show you the last two colors that I have left to put in it. So this one is called Winter Tide. Quite dark with purples and greens. Blue, I think. And then, let's see. It's actually been really fun to rediscover these colorways as I've been knitting the socks because I had put them all back in their envelopes and just every time I um, go to a new color, I get to discover them all over again. Uh, this one is called The Time Between. Oh, and it's a pretty blue one, which also matches what I'm wearing today, <laughs> incidentally. Um, I've also been working on another pair of socks. You know, it just seems so boring, uh, but even though I am itching to cast on a sweater and something else a little more complex, I just haven't had the brain space for it lately. So it seems a little bit disappointing to just come on and show you socks, but that's, that's just where I am in my crafting at the moment. Oh, I was going to dig them out of my bag, but I actually put one on a sock blocker. Um, these socks are a gift for my daughter-in-law for her birthday at the end of uh, December, so I'm getting a real jump on gift knitting this year. And um, this is Knit Picks, Knit Picks Felici in the Under the Sea colorway. And it looks like this. Knit up. And then I had some, um, an old, old skein of Knit Picks back when they used to call Stroll Essential. That's how old it is. Uh, so this is Essential Kettle Dyed and the colorway is Ivy. But it just matched this green so well and that just meant I could, you know, not have to interrupt the striping pattern uh, throughout the sock. So. I am also this far with the second sock. I've been, you know, knitting these also concurrently on two needles. And so more than halfway through there, and um, she has a slightly smaller uh, foot than I do, and so it shouldn't take too long to finish these up. There's no deadline other than the end of the year. Um, so I just am kind of working on these uh, when it's convenient, if another project is not at the, um, you know, the right place that it needs to be at for me to work on it mindlessly. So we were away and I, I worked on my winter magical socks on the way up in the car and then I think I had reached the point where I needed to put in the heel and I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with the heel. And so I worked on these on the way home. So I got quite a bit done on those. And the only other project I have to share with you is my Winter Magical woven scarf that I am weaving from the, as I mentioned earlier, part of the Winter Magical collection. Um, I'm using that for the warp and then I am using another Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn in the Bedazzled Base in the don't tell him it's a rainbow colorway for the weft. And um, because of the nature of weaving, uh, it doesn't look a lot different than it did a couple of weeks ago, at least at first glance. But I would guess I'm about three quarters of the way through the weaving now. So I took my loom over to the window and I've tried to get, um, a picture that's maybe a little bit brighter than the ones that I shared. I think the ones I took for my uh, project page. I think last week I actually shared, shared a video or last episode I shared a video about it. It's, we actually have a little sunshine peeking through. Um, 
but it, it's kind of been coming and going. So um, I will put a picture in here of what my project looks like now, just so that you will have seen it. <laughs> uh, and that's it for works in progress. I told you, not very exciting. Um, one thing that's always exciting though is discovering Crinkle Crinkle, which yarn I get to knit on for the next month's personal sock yarn club. So I have June's bag here. So let's see what my next sock project is going to look like. I won't look. It's still a bit caught here on the staple. There we go. I know this is hard, especially with your butts. Okay, you ready? It's really thick. Oh, okay. This is one of the Arna and Carlos colorways. They're low footed colorways. Well, that's a nice, beautiful, bright skein to knit. On. This was one of my uh, favorite colorways from that collection. So now I get to see how it all looks up, um, how it looks all knit up. So I look forward to casting that on again. Um, on again. I look forward to casting that on tomorrow and starting another um, installment of the Personal Sock Yarn Club. This has been so much fun and I really have. Um, other than I think one month not really remembered what yarn I had tucked away for that month So it's been a true surprise and a really fun way of kind of rediscovering my stash this year All right um, That brings us to what's been going on around here and um, lots of family stuff uh, last no, not last weekend. The weekend before last was our Victoria Day weekend here in Canada. Uh, so the Monday is the holiday. Uh, Cameron took Friday off, so we would have an extra long weekend. And we had planned to head up to the cabin on Thursday night. Um, and so uh, was our son Matt and daughter-in-law Stephanie. And... I was kind of had mixed feelings about it because I had lots going on the week or yeah the week prior to that and and just I knew that Thursday was going to be very busy with grocery shopping and packing and getting ready to head out the door right after work on Thursday um and then we were kind of talking about it and I touched base with Matt and it turned out they had decided to go up Friday morning instead. And then that just made our decision a whole lot easier. We said, you know what, we're gonna do the same too. So that meant that Thursday was much more relaxed if we had all of Thursday night to get things ready. And so when we set out on uh, Friday for holidays, it was, you know, in a nice relaxed mood and not feeling uh, so pressured. Cameron was kind of uh, iffy about wanting to drive up because he knew it would be dark by the time we got there on Thursday and we knew we'd have to get the water going and we'd been up there the weekend before so we we thought it would all be ready to go just fine. As it turned out, it turned out to be a really good decision not to go till Friday because when we went to turn the water on uh, there was no new water flowing into our holding tank and um, long story short uh, everything we had gotten going the prior weekend uh, there's a step that should have been taken when we it's too complicated to get into put it this way we didn't have water right away we had to do they Matt and um, Cameron went up to the spring discovered the problem uh, set it right and then uh, began the process of kind of putting air out of the lines in order for the water to then flow into the tank like it's supposed to, which it did uh, by about quarter to seven that night. Um, they had some help when uh, my um, two sisters and two brothers-in-law arrived a little bit uh, later in the afternoon. And so yeah, by quarter to seven, the water was flowing, everything was fine for the rest of the weekend. So it uh, was a success, but it was kind of disappointing after thinking we had it all figured out the weekend before. 
Uh, on the other hand, it is a new to us system and now, you know, we have that experience and know what we should have done the week before and now we know what to do from now on. So it's all a learning curve. We were supposed to have had quite a large group of us at the cabins on the long weekend, but in the end there were only nine of us. So I know for some of you, nine probably sounds like a very large group, but when you've grown up in a big family like I have, uh, it doesn't sound like very much. Um, especially when I think back when I was growing up and pretty well every long weekend, the whole family would gather at the cabins. Um, all my aunts and uncles and cousins. Uh, in any case, in addition to us and Matt and Steph, there was my mom and two of my sisters and their husbands, including my sister and brother-in-law from Toronto who had come out for the week. Um, unfortunately, another brother-in-law had some medical issues, so he and my sister weren't able to make it. And then um, our youngest son and his girlfriend had had a change of plans. And then our daughter's family, three of them had COVID, so they had to wait out the isolation period. But we had a good weekend uh, nevertheless, especially after we got the water going. And we just spent it doing sort of regular things we do at the cabin. Um, at this time of year, there's always some jobs to, to do and, you know, to get things opened up again for the season. Um, went for a walk to the lake, uh, played cards, had some communal meals. I also had some visitors come by. On uh, Saturday, one of our neighbors uh, was at, up at the cabin with some of his family, so he took a little break from the kerfuffle and uh, came over and caught up with us since, uh, you know, last year. And then, uh, Sunday, um, I have a cousin who lives, I don't know, hour, hour and a half from where we're located there. So she and her husband came down for a visit, um, accompanied by their son and granddaughter who were visiting from Alberta. So I hadn't seen my second cousin and his daughter since 2013 when we had a family reunion. So it was nice to get reacquainted with them again. Um, his daughter is about the same age as our oldest granddaughter. So she has grown into quite a lovely young lady and yeah, it was just nice to touch base with, with uh, those two again. And then soon after they left, we had some uh, neighbors arrive for dinner. They are permanent residents up there. Um, my mom sees them quite a bit. They're very good to her. They've been uh, family friends for a long time. And so we had invited them to come for supper on Sunday. So um, we left Monday morning. My sister and brother-in-law came home with us and stayed a couple of more days before leaving on Wednesday. And while they were here, they got to see a lot more family. Um, soon after we got home, we dropped them off at one of my sister's homes while we went to go do grocery shopping. So um, as luck would have it, their uh, two daughters were visiting them as well as their son-in-law and two grandchildren. So my uh, sister and brother-in-law got to meet their uh, newest grand niece who is now almost two and a half years old but that's covid times um and then uh later that day we had invited all of our kids and grandkids over for happy hours so we had a nice sunday evening with the whole family together and then um or i guess it was monday i should say the the holiday day and then tuesday uh the sister and brother-in-law who were able to make it up to the cabins um, came over for happy hour. So I think by the time they left, my sister said they had seen all but two nephews and uh, my nephew's wife. So that's not too bad considering what a big family, just our branch of the family is. After dropping my sister and brother-in-law off at the airport, I came home to a very quiet house, but in a good way. As much as I'd loved having them here and as much as I'd enjoyed uh, all the family time over the weekend and for the rest of their visit, I was ready for some quiet time. So I've more or less just spent the last week kind of catching up on some things around the house 
And other than uh, running a few errands on Sunday, we stuck pretty close to home this weekend. Coming up this weekend is our first ball tournament of the season. In fact, it's our first ball tournament in about two years because of COVID. So that should be fun. Uh, unfortunately, the weather is not supposed to be very good though, so cross fingers we don't get too wet. One advantage to being the scorekeeper is that I get to sit in the nice dry dugout while the rest of the team goes out on the field. So hopefully it's not too wet and cold for them. Um, the team's continuing to do well. They won their game again last night. So that's definitely made for a more enjoyable season than we've had the last number of years. Winning isn't everything, but it does put everyone in a good mood. <laughs> and just in general, this new reconfigured team this year, it has a really good dynamic and been quite enjoying fall season this year. Having said that, I did skip out on last night's game. I had not slept very well the night before and I was just feeling really tired. So I checked to see if my daughter was going to watch our son-in-law and to see if she minded keeping score for me. Um, which she was and which she didn't. And so um, I decided just to stay home and I uh, knit on my socks and watched a movie and just, yeah, just enjoyed a nice quiet evening, a little bit of a recharge. So I do intend to record next week if all goes well. I'm hoping by then that maybe I'll have cast on a sweater. I'm really itching to cast one on, but I don't know which one. I'm also thinking about um, Helen Stewart has a new mystery shawl knit along starts next week. It uses four colors of fingering weight. Haven't even begun looking at my stash, but I'm considering maybe joining in on then, on that, I should say. Um, I just, I need something a little more challenging than socks. And I'm hoping now that sort of the busiest time is behind me for now that I'll have what it what I need to concentrate on a, you know a little bit more complex uh, project. Um, I also have some sewing I want to finish up so we'll see. I'm never sure what the week will bring but hopefully nothing will upset my plans for putting out an episode again next week so watch for that. Um, as for something good, um, I was trying to think how to actually write this down in my notebook. So what I wrote was handmade worthy gift recipients, uh, because they weren't just knit worthy, they were also so worthy. <laughs> so as you might remember, I had designed a pair of socks for my uh, Toronto sister for her birthday. So I was able to give them to her and it's just such a gratifying feeling when you uh, see a genuine look of uh, admiration and appreciation when they open up their present. Um, she was very happy with them. She rightly pointed out that they're very different than all of the other socks that I've knit her and she was very excited to wear them. Uh, I wanted to get some FO pics of them on her in case I do decide to publish the pattern. And so she very kindly obliged me and put off wearing them until um, their trip home. And she was quite pleased because the purple on the cuff matched the purple top that she was wearing. She's not the only one in this family who likes to match up socks with what they're wearing, even if no one else is going to see them. <laughs> um, and then um, while my uh, sister and brother-in-law were here on Tuesday, I showed them the quilt that I had made for their new grandson. And again, just genuinely liked it. And my sister just says how much she knows that their daughter-in-law especially is just gonna love it. So, um, very excited to hear the reaction from them once they give it to them. They're heading back to Ontario to meet their new grandson in a couple of weeks. So I've got to get it all wrapped up and, and uh, deliver to them so they can tuck it in their suitcase. So yeah, it makes it all worthwhile. And I know many of you can relate that um, you have people in your life who uh, 
it's worth making things for and putting that time and effort in and others not so much but it is very gratifying when you do um, do gift someone something and you can just see how much they truly uh, love and appreciate it all right on that note I am going to sign off I think it's a pretty short one um, hopefully I have a lot more things to show you in a week's time uh, thanks as always for watching have yourselves a great week and I will hopefully see you again very soon bye for now